The third iteration of a Surface form factor is usually when Microsoft figures it out. The Surface Pro series was great starting with the Surface Pro 3, the Surface Book 3 proved that the Surface Book series should exist, then we have the Surface Laptop 3 which really pinned down what the Surface Laptop series should be about. It came out just over two years ago and there's also the Surface Laptop 4, but the Surface Laptop 3 has been my main laptop for the past year. It just got updated to Windows 11 so I thought it was a perfect time to revisit it and show you what's aged well, what hasn't, and if you should buy it in 2021 or 2022. But you know what else we should revisit? Skillshare, the sponsor for this video. Skillshare is the go-to online learning platform for aspiring creators. It's got thousands of courses taught by creators for creators. You can really learn anything on the creative spectrum from creative writing to film and video to web development. You don't need any prior knowledge either because Skillshare has courses for all levels of experience. I mostly use Skillshare to improve my video production and recently I've been wanting to up my production quality in the tiny studio that I live in. So I started to take Rachel and Daniel's DIY product photography class. With no budget and little to no space, I wanted to know how I can make my videos look as good as possible with such limitations. While I can't replicate everything they've shown me, the class has definitely given me some new ideas for my YouTube videos. Skillshare has so many courses just just like this and if you're interested the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Even after two years, there's a lot of things that have aged well on the Surface Laptop 3, and one of those things is the hardware. As you all know, the Surface team makes some really nice looking devices, but to me, the metal, non-Alcantara versions of the Surface Laptop 3, the Laptop 4 included, are the best put together devices in the entire lineup. It's really strange because there isn't that much unique to this laptop. It's not a 2-in-1 or a convertible, it's just a classic Ultrabook form factor, but that's exactly the thing. Because it's not trying to do anything super ambitious like the Surface Pro, the Surface Book, or the Surface Laptop Studio, there aren't any awkward holes in this design and I think the Surface team really aced everything with this hardware. The matte black version is made of this aluminum casing that encompasses the whole device from the exterior to the palm rest. It's like cool to the touch and feels super premium when you're just holding it and also while you're typing on it. It's got this MacBook Air like wedge shaped design to keep it as thin as possible but it definitely has its own identity. It's got this boxy almost isometric edges to it that make this laptop very unique looking compared to anything else out there. It's just the right size and weight to be easily portable but not too small or light to feel cheap. Same comments apply for that compact 65 watt charger. Plus, even at this size, it's actually not too shabby on the ports. On the right, it's got the classic Surface Connect port for charging and docking. On the left, you have a standard USB-A, a, a non-Thunderbolt USB-C port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's also an additional USB-A charging port on the power supply, so you can charge another device if the wall outlet or your other USB port is occupied. Since this is a Surface device, the hinge is just perfect. It's buttery smooth with good resistance and hasn't really weakened at all during the whole time that I've had it. The best part of this entire hardware is a closing mechanism. This might be all metal and glass, but it's got the softest and smoothest closing feeling that I've ever felt on a laptop. The only other device that comes this close to producing the same feeling is closing the Surface Duo. And yep, this laptop does pass the one-handed open test. It looks like the new Surface Laptop Studio seems to be the king of keyboard and touchpad combos in the Windows world, especially with the new haptic touchpad. But I'm willing to bet that the Surface Laptop 3 is a very close runner up. Now if you've used a Surface Laptop or a Surface Book before, the keyboard will be a very familiar experience. It's just a really comfortable keyboard to type on. The overall spacing, layout, and travel are just perfect for a 13 inch laptop. It's got three stage backlighting and the function controls available are just the ones that I needed. And why I like the touchpad so much is that just like the closing experience, clicking on this touchpad feels so responsibly clicky and soft at the same time. The sound isn't loud or obtrusive, but you can definitely feel the feedback coming back every time you click so you know it works every time. You've got a big range of space for the left click and it's just a good size touchpad in general. Plus with Microsoft's precision drivers, it's just a really responsive touchpad and all your gestures work better than any non-surface Windows laptop in the market. If you're hanging onto your MacBook just for the keyboard and touchpad, you should definitely try the Surface Laptop 3 or 4 at least once. 
Surface devices typically have one of the best displays in the Windows world, and the Surface Laptop 3 doesn't disappoint. There's the bigger 15-inch version, but this smaller version comes with a 13.5-inch Pixel Sense touchscreen display with a 2255 by 1504 resolution. It's not quite as pixel dense as the Surface Pro or the Surface Book series, but this is still a sharp display and you won't be able to notice any kind of pixelation on this device. Plus, it's just a high quality display that still holds up today. Now, it definitely doesn't have the smallest bezels and it's not an OLED display, but the modern design of this laptop more than makes up for the bezels and this display can still produce some deep blacks with some attractive and accurate colors. It can get up to 400 nits of brightness, so it's not too bad outdoors either. The only part you'll have to worry about is the glass panel, which is pretty reflective, which may get a little annoying in the sunlight. The 3x2 aspect ratio is very accessible for all types of content. It has more letterboxing for video content, but everything else benefits from this more squared aspect ratio. I admit that I'm pretty jealous of the new high refresh rate displays on the new Surface lineup, but I like to think 60Hz will still be the standard for most mid-level laptop models for a couple more years. Overall, I'm very satisfied with this display and don't really need anything more than this for at least the next two years. Moving on to the speakers, which are nowhere to be seen, that's because they are under the keyboard. Traditionally, those types of speakers suck. They're often muffled and don't produce the highest of volumes. But these hidden speakers here are actually really good and still one of the best you'll find in the market. There's little to no distortion, produces high quality sound at high volume levels, just all around super impressive coming from such a small laptop with speakers under the keyboard. Not much to say about the 720p webcam other than it's not great, but better than average. I like the audio quality a lot more than the video quality, but you guys can be the judge of that from the sample. Another thing that's aged well is a software, which is now on Windows 11. So I know a lot of people have had issues with Windows 11 because of its strict system requirements, but of course that's not an issue here with the Surface Laptop 3. It meets all the requirements, and since this is a Microsoft laptop, it gets dedicated firmware updates straight from Microsoft and will continue to do so with Windows updates for many more years to come. And Windows 11 with this new transparency effects, refresh start menu, Menu and added animations makes this beautiful laptop look even better than before. Windows 11 and the sleek design seem like a perfect match for each other. It's almost as if this laptop was pre-designed for Windows 11. In-app performance has been pretty much the same between Windows 10 and 11, however, because Windows 11 has so many new animations, the laptop feels smoother, but also a bit slower in its overall UI navigation. Speaking of which, let's talk about performance. This configuration of the Laptop 3 is probably the most popular because it's like the mid-model in specs and price. It comes with a quad-core 10th gen Intel Core i5 processor, Iris Plus graphics, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of storage. You can actually upgrade the SSD yourself, and the Laptop 3 was the first time you could do so on a Surface product. Considering Intel's 12th gen processors are not quite out yet, the 10th gen i5 in the Laptop 3 still holds up today. I can have many tabs open at the same time while playing a picture-in-picture -picture video without any worries. I wouldn't say it's an instant, zippy experience when launching apps, but once they're open, this is a great multitasker for almost anything you throw at it. FYI, this is not a fanless design. The fans are placed on the back right below the display, so a lot of the heat gets emitted in this corner area. Even with that, this laptop does heat up and throttle, especially with heavy use cases like gaming and photo and video editing. So, does this laptop game? Technically, no. But actually, yes. By that, I mean with Iris Plus graphics, it can decently play early 2010 titles and some recent games like Valorant, which is typical of laptops with integrated graphics. But don't expect the internals on this thing to handle anything more than that. But if you've been watching my recent videos, you would know that that's not how I play games. I play everything in the cloud using Xbox Cloud Gaming and Stadia, so it really doesn't matter what hardware I have. And because these services are essentially streaming a game like a video, I can do other things on my laptop without making it explode. Now, if you don't have fast or consistent Wi-Fi, this laptop straight up sucks for gaming, so don't consider it. Then for photo and video editing, this laptop is serviceable for that, but I don't see it being a long-term option for serious content creators. Photo editing is fine, you can even do it on battery power and have decent experience playing with multiple projects, layers, and exporting, but for video editing, this laptop struggles in waves. By that, I mean at times, everything feels fast and smooth, but then it reaches a certain temperature and everything just bombs, forcing you to let the laptop rest for a little bit. So the i5 Laptop 3 is decent enough for short-term video projects, but don't get this if you're planning to edit on it like every day. 
But overall, besides video editing, I'm very satisfied with the performance here, especially with cloud gaming as a real option now. The one area that hasn't aged well is the battery life. This laptop being so thin never had the biggest battery, so it was never a battery champ, but it did get me a decent 7-8 to eight hours of use per day when I first got it. Now after a year and with Windows 11 on board, I'm only getting about 6 hours of use. It's not terrible, but it's a bit of a bummer for such a portable device. On the other hand, charging time with the 65 watt charger is fast enough, getting me from 20 to 100% in an hour and a half. You also get the option of charging with the USB-C port if you forget the Surface power supply at home. In the end, the Surface Laptop 3 is still a great buy even after two years. It's one of the highest quality and best looking laptops you can get running Windows. It's got an excellent keyboard, touchpad, display, Windows 11, and more than enough performance that will satisfy most people needing a productivity laptop. Plus, if you look on eBay or Amazon, you can find this configuration or higher for a really good price. Surface devices are typically really expensive at launch, but models that are one or two generations old can be one of the best deals you can get for what they offer. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you're interested in an older Surface device like the Surface Laptop 3, feel free to let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to answer your questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.